Hi everyone, this video is going to be on how I keep slim after my 50s. This video was actually part of my channel, but for some reason it got corrupted and it's no longer available for viewing. I also cannot see it. So I'm redoing this video today in 2018. What I'm going to try to do is to remember the questions that were asked to me back then. I remember one question was how do I deal with my changing body with age? Well, if you guys have seen most of my videos, you know that I deal with change by accepting. There's a lot of things that I cannot control and I certainly don't want to spend my time stressing and crying over things that I cannot control. Not stressing, not crying, I can control that. But aging, gaining weight, being less strong, I cannot control that. So it is what it is. I just accept it and I think about it in a positive way and I just keep on going. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to control things that I can control, such as which kind of food I decide to eat and when I decide to move my body. I can move my body simply by walking around the block or by exercising on a yoga mat in my living room or even going to a gym. But any of those two things, eating right and exercising, are my decision. Nobody's going to control that for me. I'm the only one who can control that for me. So if I want to be happy, with my buddy, then I gotta do the work. The type of exercises that always worked for me was squats and planks. I was the kind of girl that from the age of 20, 20, 30s and 40s, I did workout six times a week, high impact aerobics, high impact Taibo. I love anything that was extremely challenging, the higher the better, the faster the better, that kind of a thing. However, at 48, my knees gave in. They said, no lady, you ain't gonna do that to us anymore. We are in pain, so we're making you stop do these high impact activities. And since then, I've been doing low impact activity such as stretching, squats, planks, and weight lifting. What do I eat? Well, luckily for me, I am a small portion eater. I was never the type of person to eat big meals. It's not my thing. Also, thankfully, I'm not somebody who eats her emotions. I talk my emotions, maybe too much, but for me, talking is my saving grace. It's what helps me deal when I have emotions that I'm not capable to categorize and organize so that I can be at peace with them. What I do is I talk, 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 talk a lot. I was raised by an Italian father who believed in eating well and he always made us be aware of the importance of ourselves in this world for us to put good food in our body. If we, we, my brother and I, ever asked him for a Twinkie, he would say, really, does your body deserve a Twinkie? What has your body done bad for you to put such junk food in it? Instead, I will give you a panino. Panino in Italian, it's a sandwich but that's what my father would rather us, us eat. So from small children, we learn that Twinkie, no, no, and bread and salami, okay. Yes, I understand, it's still not good. <laughs> However, the difference here is that with a Twinkie, because of the sugar and that corn syrup, you get addicted and you just want more and more and more and you can never stop. Whereas the bread and salami, once you've had that bread and salami panino, you're done. The addiction is non-existent with a panino. My father always taught us to eat in small portion because to eat big portion is not considered ladylike for me or gentlemanlike for my brother. So he would always give us food, but it was in a way that it wasn't overflowing our plate. With that in mind, I like to have a good digestive tract so the vitamins go where they're supposed to go and they can help my organs make me be a healthy person and look as best as possible instead of being somebody who's sickly or has pimples and or skin irritation because they're eating food that are laden with addictive substances. I eat everything being conscientious that I am not doing anything to make myself not well in the long run. In the morning, I have an oatmeal, almond milk coffee, some eggs, some spinach with sweet potato, yogurt with berries. I don't always have all this in one breakfast sitting, but this is in general the type of foods that I will ingest early in the morning. 
I don't use sugar in my coffee, in my cereal. I try as much as possible not to eat food that don't appear to be sugar, but at the end they are sugar, like too much white bread, tortilla. Also, I don't like too salty of a food, so I use very little salt. By the way, girls, salt is the first thing that will swell you up. So if you don't want to have that swollen look, take away salt. Not only the salt that you add to your food, but also the salt that is found in different foods around you all the time, like cookies, chips, chocolate, soda water. I'm a salad eater. I love salad. So in my salad, besides olive oil, which is so important for your well-being, olive oil, I add garlic. I always press garlic in my salad unsalted grains like pumpkin seed and sunflower seeds. When I go to restaurant, obviously this goes out of the window because in a restaurant I don't have control of what they're feeding me. However, what I do have control is what I choose from the menu. Usually I just have a soup and sometimes I will add a salad, but I ask for the dressing on the side. Because I'm a small portion eater, this is very easy for me to restrain myself from eating so much. However, I will tell you this much. I'm Italian. If we go to an Italian restaurant, I'm having pizza and a beer and nobody's ever going to tell me not to have that. But as you can see, pizza and a beer are not as addictive as if I were to have, let's say, cheesecake and a Coca-Cola. Because in the cheesecake, there's sugar that is addictive and in Coca-Cola, there's sugar that's addictive. So you just want more and more and more of that. Having said all this about restaurants, I can tell you guys, I go to restaurants about mm, once a month if so i am not a big restaurant eater because i like my food i like the way i cook so to go somewhere else to pay money for something that is not to my standards yes i am somebody who's extremely picky with what she eats that's why i usually don't go to restaurants so much Raised by an Italian father who kept a watchful eye on what we ate and who taught us to appreciate ourselves first and foremost, made it easy for me all my life to never need to diet but rather choose non-junky food. I hope that this was some kind of help to you. After all, it's never too late to go healthy. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Gros bisous. Mwah.